Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, My Calendar 2, the sequel to yesterday's problem. This one is pretty similar in that we still have events that are going to be booked. Each of them is going to have a start and an ending, so you can think of it as an interval. The start is always going to be less than the end. This time we actually are allowed to have overlapping events. Like if we had something like this, that is actually acceptable. We can only not have at any given point three events that are overlapping. So just to redraw this a bit, if we had perhaps something like this, or maybe this interval could have been longer either way, we can't have any section where there is three intervals. So here you can see that this particular section has three events at the same time. So depending on the order that these events were added in, one of them actually would not have been scheduled. So if this was the first one and this was the second one, this third one would not have been scheduled. How exactly do we solve this problem? Because just because this one wasn't scheduled doesn't mean that an event like this one wouldn't have. This one is actually fine because it only overlaps with this interval. It's probably easiest to determine the section of overlapping of two intervals when we're scheduling like these ones. So anytime we schedule some intervals, just because if two events overlap, that's not a problem for us, doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to detect that and try to determine the overlapping region. So suppose we keep track of a list of events. When we schedule the second one here, we should take this section of the event, first we should determine that they overlap. The easiest way for me, at least like conceptually to do that is if they're not overlapping, they're gonna look something like this, where let's say that's S1 and this is start two and end two. We know that if they're not overlapping, the ending of one of them is gonna come before or technically equal to the start of the other. So we'll check this, like either this is true or the opposite is true, where uh, maybe E2 comes before S1. If neither of these are true, so I just wrap it in a knot, then we know that they're overlapping. Now, if they are overlapping, how do we get the overlapping region? Well, we guarantee it's looking something like this. Let's say this is S and this is S2. Among the two starting points, we definitely want the one that is to the right. So basically, we want the maximum of these two. That's how we get that one. And among these two, we want to get the minimum of them. We want the one that's more to the left. So we would get this one. So the max of the start and minimum of the ending points. That should give us this region here. And what exactly do we do with this region? Well, we can think of this as its own interval or like event but it's definitely different from the originals. So the easiest thing to do is actually store this in a separate list of events. Suppose that the first list is our non-overlapping, and then we have a second list over here for the overlapping intervals. So just to kind of draw this uh, roughly so it lines up here, this is what the overlapping are gonna look like. But what should we do to the non-overlapping intervals now? Ideally, we'd be able to kind of get rid of this section from both of them and just have this part and this part. The problem is that that might require removing from like the middle of a list, which is going to make it a linear time operation. And technically I think like you could do that if you wanted to, it'll probably pass on this problem, but it's actually not necessary for us to do that because this is what we're gonna do. Remember, if an event does not cause a triple booking, then we will add it. But if it does cause a triple booking, then we just immediately return false. We don't actually have to add that event to the list of events. So this is what we're gonna do. When we're given an event, the first thing we should do is check if it overlaps with any of the overlapping regions that we have. We have a separate list for those. And so if it does, at that point, we can immediately return false. We don't actually have to add that booking. But if it doesn't overlap with any of these, then we know for sure it's never gonna overlap with this region in the original non-overlapping event. It might still overlap with like this, like with one of the events or like maybe over here, but we know for sure it would not overlap with this part because if it did, we would have returned false from the first iteration anyway. So this is kind of a clever way of doing it. From this part, we kind of do it the same way. So either that event like doesn't overlap with anything, in which case we just add it to the list of events, or it does overlap. 
So maybe it'll be something like this. It overlaps with this one, and this is like the section of it, in which case we would take that section only, the overlapping region, and then add it to the overlapping list. And also at the end, we would add that interval itself to the non-overlapping list as well. So it's pretty much guaranteed that none of these intervals will actually overlap with each other. Because if they did, that would pretty much be a triple booking. So that's pretty much the solution. We'll be iterating through two lists, but that's still going to be linear time with respect to how many events have already been booked. And linear space as well, of course. So we have a couple of methods to fill in. I'm definitely going to start with a constructor. Like I mentioned, we're going to have two lists, the non-overlapping intervals and the overlapping intervals. First, we're going to iterate through the overlapping intervals because if our current interval that we're trying to book overlaps with any of these then we just return false immediately so let's iterate over them i'm going to unpack the start and the end in self.overlapping and then i'm going to check if they're not overlapping then one of them should end before the other one starts so either this is true or this is true now if neither of these are true then they do overlap, in which case we have a triple booking. So here we would just return false. If you want to, you can clean this up. I'm basically saying neither of these are true, which could also be written as saying uh, the opposite of both of these are true. So I could do this, get rid of the not and the parentheses, and then change this. So this would be that, and this would be that. This is less readable for me, so I actually don't do it this way. But some people like the most concise solution. Um, so now we will go through the non-overlapping intervals, S, E, in self dot non-overlapping, and do the same thing, like check the same condition. So if these overlap, what do we want to do? Well, this is not a triple booking. We just want to get the overlapping region, which we can get by taking the max of both of the starts and the minimum of both of the ends. So this will give us the overlapping region. I'm going to make a tuple out of it. And then I'm going to take that tuple and I'm going to append it to the overlapping list now. So self dot overlapping dot append to the overlapping intervals. So move this to the next line to make it a bit more readable. Um, but after we do that, we don't just want to return true. Like we're guaranteed to return true as long as this doesn't execute. But before we return true, make sure to actually add the given interval to the list. The reason we didn't do that before iterating over this is because we don't want to check if that interval overlaps with itself because that doesn't really mean anything. So here we'll say non-overlapping to the non-overlapping intervals. Add this one itself. So this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it. Looks like I'm getting like a parenthesis issue. I don't remember what that's from. Maybe I need to do this. Oh, I have an extra opening parenthesis. Whoops. Okay, this is the correct one. And you can see that it works and it's efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.